black supremacy. And with this particular video, I want to address Young Pharaoh's question dealing with Malcolm X stating that Elijah Muhammad was a pedophile. And I also will deal with the connection between the relationship between the Nation of Islam and Jim Jones. But one at a time. And then something else somebody wanted me to touch on that they, they added in one of the comments. If I'm missing something, just hit me in the comments. I'll deal with it. No problem. But I'll start off with, was Elijah Muhammad a pedophile? Let's even, let's even get a little bit more precise. Did Malcolm X state that Elijah Muhammad was a pedophile? Because young Pharaoh says he never said that. He just posted Malcolm X words. But he did that very slickly. Because the video he posted of Malcolm X was labeled by somebody else who said, Malcolm says Elijah Muhammad was a pedophile. But if you listen to Malcolm in the video, he never says that. He said that Elijah Muhammad was marrying young girls or getting young teenage girls pregnant. This is what Malcolm X's claim was. Never using the word pedophile. Now, if we look up the definition of a pedophile, we will see that it, it means someone that is inter interested in children before they reach puberty. I think it's pronounced pu pubescent or something. I don't know how, how, do you, how they pronounce the, the damn word, prepubescent, but before puberty. So in order for someone to be a pedophile, they got to interest, be interested in children before they reach puberty. Malcolm X specifically said teenage children. Teenagers. Not even children. He said teenagers. Oh, that was his exact word. So teenager denotes that the child has went through puberty. So that would take them out of the pedophile definition. If we're going to be right and exact. They're teenagers. If Elijah slept with teenagers in this day and time that we live in right now, he would be considered, it would be considered statutory rape. And that depends on what city or state that they're in because it changes from city to city and state to state. The laws are different. I think even today in California, you can marry someone 13. Damn near child marriage is damn near, damn near legal in California. But depending on the state you in or the city, what statutory rape is, and I'll just say state since it's statutory rape, it would have to be that state today to be considered statutory rape so even back then it may not have been considered that because the laws changed back then it may have been okay to marry someone or be in a relationship with someone at a younger age this was in the 60s so back in that time it would not even be considered statutory rape but in, in most cases today that's what it would be considered he wouldn't be called a pedophile as a precise de definition of his behavior, he more so would be called a statutory rapist. Today, if he was to, if he was to do that today, depending on what state that he was in, and that changes state to state, so he wouldn't be considered a pedophile by definition. So th that's a misuse of the word, and Malcolm never said that. He never used the word. He never stated that. He said teenagers. So you can throw that away that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is some type of pedophile. The word doesn't fit. You can say according to today's laws in Buffalo, New York, in New York City, Elijah Muhammad would be considered a statutory rapist. That would be more correct statement. But you got to check the laws in New York to make sure that that's true. That... And you have to know specifically what age these women were. If they were teenagers, they could have been anywhere up to 17 or 18. 
So just because they were teenagers doesn't mean necessarily they were 14. Or 13. We don't know. We don't have the exact ages. He said teenagers. That could mean 17. That could mean 18. Or, or a, little, a little younger. We don't know. If they was 18, which is a teenager. If they were 17... In some places that will be statutory rape. In some places that will be legal. Even almost down to 14 in some states, even still today. So you can throw out the Honorable Elijah Muhammad being some type of pedophile. It is not even logical. It's not even, it doesn't even make sense based on the definition of what a pedophile is. And according to the time that he was living in, the books weren't, it wasn't on the books like that. And it doesn't fit the standard definition of what a pedophile is. And you're supposed to be a scholar, then you need to be more precise and more right and exact with the statements that you're making. Somebody just can't label a video and put a false label on it, and then you run off of that without doing your research as to what a pedophile is and, and listen clearly and carefully as to what Malcolm X said in the video. Next, I'll go to the Jim Jones piece. I'll go into that. Jim Jones, why was the Nation of Islam standing up there with that picture that you had of Jim Jones? Jim Jones was a very powerful man who spoke a lot of truth, who was very much of a revolutionary to a great capacity, who wanted to create a different society and a different community that was better than what was going on in the United States of America in that time. He was doing the same thing that a lot of leaders were trying to do in that time. Elijah Muhammad was trying to do it. There were so many leaders. Even Dr. Martin Luther King. Jim Jones attempted to fill Dr. Martin Luther King's dream before today, Jim Jones was the first person to try to actually implement Dr. Martin Luther King's dream. That's what he was doing in Guyana. He tried to create a very diverse society based on love, peace, and harmony where people of different nationalities and races could get along and live a healthy wealthy and peaceful life that was the objective of Jim Jones let's be clear so Jim Jones didn't say we all gonna move to Guyana from California Los Angeles we're gonna move from there to Guyana so we can drink some Kool-Aid and die that's just not what happened Jim Jones had a very beautiful vision. All, you all who accept integration today are no different from Jim Jones. Jim Jones wanted a very integrated society, an integrated community, and in a society where things will be better for minority ethnicities and for humanity as a whole. That's what Jim Jones' objective is. And if you went down to the land in Guyana, you find out that it was a lot of black people there. A lot of black people was down there with Jim Jones. And the Nation of Islam had an obligation to be wherever black people was at. To be vigilant and to be involved in whatever black situation or predicament was going on. With black Americans. So they got involved. They went down there with Jim Jones. And Jim Jones spoke highly. Of Malcolm X. Spoke highly. Of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Spoke highly. Of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now Jim Jones situation. Went down bad. Because the government kept putting pressure on him. The government kept attacking him because they didn't want him to do what he was doing. 
They didn't want Jim Jones to get those people out of the matrix. Jim Jones was taking people out of the matrix and bringing them into what was then New Zion. For all y'all who know what I'm talking about, Jim Jones was the nature boy or the father to Hootie of his time. He was the Ben Amin of his time. He was cre he created an exodus of people to leave the matrix, leave Babylon, and move into more of a harmonious, natural, organic, free, loving society and community that he attempted to set up. But the CIA and the FBI and other institutions kept fucking with it, kept messing with it so that it would be destined for failure. And they messed it up so bad. They sent out what I believe was the congressman down there. Or the state representative. I'm not sure which one. And he went down there. Moping around. And it was turning people within the organization against one another. And it just went down horribly. And it, was un it got to a point where it was unsalvageable. So Jim Jones chose revolutionary suicide because he didn't want to go back into the matrix. He didn't want the children. He didn't want the people, the families, his followers to go back into the matrix. He didn't want their dignity to be crushed by Babylon and white supremacy. So he committed revolutionary suicide. It was supposed to be a political statement of nonconformity, of rebellion, of rejection of the matrix world and reality. Jim Jones was not crazy. He was not a fool. He just made the decision that since y'all going to try to take us, lock us up, destroy what we're doing, Bring us back into the matrix. To put our children under your custody. He said, fuck it. We would, we would rather die. Death before dishonor for what we believe in. And some of y'all look at it and look down on the suicide piece. But the Japanese commit suicide out of honor and dignity and integrity. It's a part of Japanese culture. During war, the v in Vietnam, if you catch a Vietnamese soldier, he will commit suicide. We talk about the bombing planes that was meant that attacked the white man. They were called kamikazes because they were willing to commit suicide in order to kill the white man, in order to kill white supremacy, in order to kill United States imperialism, in order to kill global white supremacy. So suicide ain't, ain't, is not so much of a negative thing as it has been made out to be. Jim Jones used suicide as a political weapon against white supremacy. It was the last weapon that he had. And he used it. I didn't want to go too long, be too long-winded on that. But I just wanted to talk about how Jim Jones started off in a very good direction. But his good direction that he was moving in was intercepted by white supremacy. It was intercepted by the United States government, the CIA, the FBI, etc. And it backed him up against a wall. And all he could do once he was up against that wall was take his own life. But the Nation of Islam went down there based on the good spirit the good consciousness and the awakening and the rebel spirit and the sincerity and the anti-white supremacy institutionalized mind that Jim Jones had. Jim Jones was very conscious and very awakened. And that's all I'm going to say about that. The last piece, I'm going to try to fit it in.
some people say, well, what are you, in your video, you didn't talk about, um, what Farrakhan said about hair, about your hair being a dust catcher and all that, and it's true, your hair gonna catch a lot of dust. The purpose of you growing hair is your, your hair is supposed to protect your body from dust, from dust getting into your eyes and getting into, caught up in your body. Your hair is, 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 is a protector from dust, so it's a dust catcher. He's absolutely correct. Now, and it catches other things, dirt, as the Honorable Mr. Lucifer said, that's very true. That's not going to stop me from wearing dreadlocks and growing my hair out because of that. Very few people have died of dust. And before we start worrying about our hair being a dust catcher, let's worry about our microwave being a radiation catcher. Let's worry about our colon being a dead flesh catcher, a dead animal flesh catcher with worms. Let's worry about our lungs being a smoke catcher. It's so many things that's being caught up in our lives that we're getting caught up into that I'm not going to waste my time worrying about some dust that's getting caught up in my hair. And I don't think you should waste your time getting worried about that either. And that should have give you a reason not to love your hair and respect your hair and appreciate your, your natural self. Because a lot of people that say they're worried about if their hair could catch some dust, the same people that shaving their face ball, their face is catching bacteria from the razor. You don't hear me. Their skin is catching bacteria and infections from the razors. So, I mean, we could just go on all day with that. We can go on all day with that, man. That's no reason to hate your hair and hate yourself. Because your hair going to catch a little dust. And it can pick up dirt. It's not the end of the world. So, I just that, that's how I really feel on the hair piece. But that does not make what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is saying as wrong. There's some truth to it. But that doesn't mean hate your hair and it is not okay to grow your hair. I don't I don't equate the two. Because I can tell you a hundred things that you, it's, it's, it, that you shouldn't do. But you're not going to do them because I tell you the negatives of them. I could tell you a million of them. So I don't think that your hair should be a concern on the list of that million. I don't think hair is at the top of the list. I think it's a whole, a whole bunch of things that need to be cut out. That you're doing that you should not be doing before you worry about if, if your dreadlocks or if your afro is catching dust. This King Noble Black Supremacy join my website www.kingnobleuncensored.com. Donate. Don't hate.